Sasha Eisenberg, a journalist and author. The more I started exploring the sushi economy, I came to realize that the ability to move this massive fish, it was this industry that existed only because of what we call globalization. How is that fish coming to me and what does it mean for the world? The fast food industry is the most unequal sector in the economy. For every one dollar that a fast food worker earns, the CEO takes home more than a thousand. We the workers, we the ones that got you to the top. This is how you repay us. This is not just a social justice issue, this is a powerful economic issue. My mama needs some money now. She got four children, you hear that? They don't know what they're doing up in there. Politics becomes personal sometimes. When you're talking about force feeding. It usually comes from a confined animal feeding operation where they're going to be fed well beyond what they would get in a grassland. Government regulation of what we eat is nothing new. So why is foie gras so interesting? Because reasonable people disagree. I don't want to be told what I can and cannot cook with. People that are against the force feeding don't know anything about that. That type of a ban can lead us down a slippery slope. It's unbelievably cruel. It reminds me of Nazi Germany. I don't really pay attention to the political situations. It's just so decadent. Woo! Do you guys see that? <laughs> In the end, we're still going to get it any way that we can, whether it's out of state, whether it's driving across the border, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's going to come. Here in the UK, lots of people from different cultures try to access the food that's traditional to them, but often those foods are illegal to buy. The term smoky refers to the way the meat is prepared. The skin remains intact to be blowtorched, making the smoky a possible health risk. It can actually kill if it gets into the bloodstream. We're so extreme with uh, cleanliness or whatever, and, and there's no issue. Who's dragging well, their feet at the moment? It's, it's the government and the meat hygiene service. You know, a bunch yeah. of numb nuts, I think. I've never taken this excursion around the bank. We've come to Newfoundland, Canada to learn more about something that's eaten here, but almost nowhere else, seal meat. The East Coast commercial seal slaughter has been of concern to the world for some decades now. People see images on the front page of seals being bludgeoned to death. There's a lot of trades that are cruel, that threaten species, and that are just something that people evolve away from. The animal rights groups have very successfully uh, co-opted politicians. I mean, it's made for TV. You have big guys killing animals on white ice. There's blood spattering everywhere. How can you compete with that image? You can't. People associate Inuit hunting with subsistence only. A lot of people aren't aware that Inuit have been selling seal skins also for, gosh, I think over 100 years now. One of the main reasons we live in poverty today, and one of the reasons seven in 10 Inuit children go hungry, is because the, the bans on seal products have made that industry not viable for us. There are very few markets left, and so what the Canadian government has been trying to do is sell seal meat. It's wild, beautiful, organic meat. I mean, you can't get any better than that. Nobody from here is ashamed of eating seal. In fact, it's totally normal. Even though they are fully aware that there's this outside perception of it as this atrocious thing to be doing, they're just like, we don't get it. How many people do you know who kill their own food, you know? And, and there's a disconnection there, you know?